So going back to thinking about students mm -hmm. and how s the practice can help a variety of students. I know that you've got a senior student who became deaf while being your student. And there's one of your senior students who had a stroke while being your student. And they both still very successfully practice. And I've actually learned from practicing with these students. So what is it about Tai Chi and the practice that can help someone who has uh, physical challenges? or that goes through a big major life incident like that? Well, well those, two, those two people, I know who you're talking about, of course, were able to turn that event. One of, one of them, he was just going about his life and suddenly he went completely deaf. Unexpectedly, unknown why, completely deaf, and he's never heard anything since. And he was able to, to use that, in a, to take it in a very positive manner. And uh, not being able to hear means he has um, he's learned to compensate for it. And the, that compensation took a lot of effort. That compensation has brought him benefits, I can say. So he's managed to turn it. So if I speak more, more specifically, for example, if I'm showing something in the Tai Chi, because he can't hear, he watches more closely and he sees things that the others don't see. And that's more important than what I was just saying. So that it's like I, when I learned from my teacher, Huang Sengxian, um, when I first learned from him, I couldn't speak Chinese and he couldn't speak English. And he said, it's like a, a, a dumb person speaking to a deaf one. He, he can't tell me anything and I can't hear anything. But he said, well, he said, still, um, I see and remember more of what he's doing than many of his students who speak his language. Because the, the same thing, so that was as if I was dumb, um, deaf. Um, I had to look very, very closely and I watched the smallest things and I took in everything I could to compensate for it. And that took me a lot more effort, but it gave me a bigger result. And the same for the person who's had the stroke here. That, that was a really big stroke. No, he's, and he is partially paralyzed yes. now. Mm -hmm. And he, he makes a tremendous effort not to let it interfere with his normal life. For example, he, he comes here, he comes on a long journey. Um, he, you could say his immune system is somewhat, um, somewhat compromised because of what caused the stroke was actually a problem with the immune system. He doesn't, he doesn't care. He's not scared. He's not scared of coming here and mixing with these people. And I've got extremely healthy, much younger students who are scared to come. And he won't allow it to stop him to come. So he makes a tremendous effort to overcome the disability. And as a result, um, his... his uh, the result of it is that he receives more. In, inside himself, he receives more. A tremendous effort. Um, so in, in these cases, uh, they have turned a, what would seem like a very um, bad event, if you like, to many people. They've turned it into something positive for themselves, and it really works for them. So I think those students are very inspirational, not only individually, but I think that they're so passionate about this practice that we have. Um, it a, is a real testimony to the actual practice itself. So I'd like to ask you some questions about you. Right. Okay. Sure. Um, so in our last interview, you said that you were completely normal, and I made a joke <laughs> saying that, uh, that we knew differently. And I think that you are a very developed human being on the earth, and we talk about people who are that way. So what is life like for you, having been working so hard on your internal development and being maybe, you know, being more internally involved than people? Well, I mean, I've been working on myself for 50 years. That's almost exactly 50 years. 
and and the the progress is somewhat slow and incremental, although there's little jumps from time to time, which are quite pleasant when you experience them after the slow thing. So it's not like um, it's not like a sudden change. Um, so it still feels like me, yeah, just an incremental. Um, change. Of course I see some people going through life and not really changing. All that's happening is the body gets older and they, then they become senile and ha have a little trouble in surviving in life. So that's the first thing in terms of myself. It feels very normal. Um, I also have, because I've had good contact with at least those three and a few more of highly developed people then I, I always had uh, a, um, I always had an understanding of, I saw from a distance what it was to be a somewhat developed person. So I had some pictures or some understanding of it and feeling myself moving towards that. And I have to say my old teachers when they died were more evolved than I am at this present. They, they were highly evolved people. Of course, I'm struggling towards their position. So, uh, it's really difficult to say, I suppose. I, like, hmm. you know, there's a rumor that you can read people's minds. Well, I like to say that everybody can read everybody else's minds. That when you have a thought, it goes out on the etheric level. And if it's directed towards a person or in any way involving them, they will receive it, but they're not aware of it. So the, your thoughts get transmitted from person to person. If you direct it towards them or if you're thinking about them, or perhaps if you're even close to them, they're picking them up. So you don't have private thoughts. That's the thing. And then, and then uh, if you've learned to become more deeply aware of the the levels inside yourself, you may be able to become aware of those thoughts that you're already picking up inside yourself. So, um, it, it's, I would say it's one of the universal small side powers that's not really of any use in itself, yeah, that you do start to become aware of more often um, the thoughts that other people are having, which you're already picking up. And you normally it's just like background noise that you wouldn't even bother to try to pick it up. If someone directs it at you more strongly, then um, you can become aware of it. That, that's that's correct. So so yes, it's true. <laughs>